as part of our ongoing investigation into both sides of the case that inspired the hit documentary series, Making a Murderer. I wrote this book to set the record straight, show that Stephen Avery is exactly where he's belongs. We've spoken to one of the lead investigators on the case, Tom Fossbender, as well as the self-proclaimed villain of the series, Ken Kratz, to discuss what they claim is the real story behind the drama. The jury saw the complete evidence. The jury wasn't fooled. We were able, through very, very strong forensic evidence, to prove that Stephen Avery was the person who killed Teresa Hobart. Today in an explosive new chapter in the ongoing saga. After the documentary, there's this letter. An alleged confession from Stephen Avery himself. In a letter, an inmate named Joseph Evans, who served time with Avery at the Boscobel, Wisconsin secured prison facility in 2010, claims that over several months in the yard together, Stephen actually told him everything about the crime, from how Teresa was murdered to how her now infamous car key really found its way into Avery's bedroom. That letter says that the key was in the pocket of a flannel shirt and dropped out of the pocket. Does that make any difference? That the key was in a flannel shirt that Stephen was wearing? Is yeah. that what he was saying? And mm -hmm. it dropped out of that flannel yeah. shirt? Well, I, I have trouble believing that. I think it, more than likely Stephen threw it into that, in the back of that uh, nightstand or the, the cabinet. To hide it? To hide, well, yeah. Although he wasn't necessarily expecting someone to, to come looking at that point. But I think he just threw it in the back of, the, in the back of that where he felt it was safe. In other passages from the shocking letter, the informant gives possible new insight into the moments leading up to Teresa's murder, writing he had thought Teresa would be an easy lay. He said that when he had asked her out for dinner or drinks with him, she had refused his offers. From there, the letter reads, he grabbed a kitchen knife out of the draw and then grabbed Teresa. He pushed her onto the bed and tied her wrist to the bed. He choked her out until she was unconscious. There's uh, many parts of Mr. Evans' letter that are, uh, that are plausible. The new informant goes on to talk about Stephen Avery's nephew, Brendan Dassey, whose confession helped convict them both. Just how involved was he really? Um, it's interesting, Ken, that he claims that Stephen Avery confessed everything to him and in this letter, he also claims that Brendan really didn't have that much to do with anything. Do you believe this letter to be authentic? I don't know if it's authentic or not. Of particular interest to those who believe in Dassey's innocence, Evans writes about how Teresa was already tied up and possibly dead when Stephen may have tricked Brendan into involving himself. He had told Brendan to go ahead, have sex with her, that Teresa won't mind if Brendan had sex with her. Steve said a very short time later, Brendan had came out of the bedroom and asked him if that lady is dead or is she just a heavy sleeper because Teresa had never moved or woke up. It may or may not be believed. It will depend on all those other circumstances. Well, what do you that, think? Uh, I mean, this is, your, this is your I, case. I what do know. you think? I don't know. You have to have an opinion on this, Ken. I, I, and if I did, I wouldn't share it with you because it isn't something, um, it isn't a rabbit hole that I really want uh, to go down. And perhaps that's because Brendan Dassey's case is still very much ongoing. A judge recently overturned his conviction, though he remains behind bars while the state of Wisconsin appeals. What's interesting about this one is that it actually helps the nephew, Brendan Dassey, who is now appealing. The main actor um, clearly is Stephen Avery. It's not Brendan Dassey. Uh, Brendan Dassey, in my opinion, never would have raped or killed Teresa Halbach without the involvement of Stephen Avery. Could this letter in some way affect Brandon Dassey's appeal? Uh, probably not the appeal, unless there is a, uh, a piece of physical evidence. His appeal is going to rise or fall on whether or not that confession is going to be uh, upheld by the federal courts. But could this letter about Avery's alleged confession affect his attorney's latest plans to get his conviction overturned? 
The letter does reveal never before heard details about jewelry Stephen may have taken from Teresa and even a knife used to kill her that he may have stashed. Is it possible that there is some new information in this inmate informant letter that's been made public? Absolutely. We didn't find a, a knife or any other um, uh, cutting instrument that at least Brendan said was involved. Uh, I've got a, a sneaky suspicion, though, that uh, law enforcement will be looking into the uh, new uh, allegations that are made in that letter. Though it remains to be seen what, if any, impact this new letter will have on the ongoing investigation, or if it will make its way into the recently announced season two of Making a Murderer. The one thing that does seem clear is that when it comes to one of the most controversial cases in the history of criminal justice, we're nowhere close to a final verdict.